Do you ever wonder how the water you drink and bathe in gets to your home? Or what happens after you use it? Frequently. My name is Ardia, and these are my friends Anadi and Anura. We're going to take you on a trip down the Mississippi River in the Twin Cities of Minnesota and show you how we use water, clean it, and then send it back to the river for others to use downstream. Many of our friends live in water. Water is very important to us. We love water. We love water. We love water. Every living thing on Earth, from moss and trees to frogs, birds and people, depend on water to live. We use water in many ways. Can you name some uses? We have all the water on Earth that's ever been here, and it is all the water the Earth will ever have. It's up to all of us to keep our Earth's precious water supply clean. Where does rain come from? It's all part of a natural water cycle. Water evaporates from lakes, rivers, and the ocean. You can't usually see it, but it rises into the atmosphere as a gas, then it cools and condenses into clouds, and when the conditions are right, it falls to the earth again as snow or rain. But how does the water get to places like homes and schools and stores? If you live in Minneapolis or St. Paul, or a few of the surrounding cities, you get your water from the Mississippi River. Do people drink water right out of the river? The Mississippi River is clean enough for animals like us, but it needs to be treated before people could drink it. The city filters the water and adds a few chemicals to keep it clean and tasting good as it moves through underground pipes to homes, schools, hospitals, and other places. But what if you don't live near a river? Remember the water cycle? Some of the water that falls from clouds soak into the ground and eventually will reach an aquifer. These are layers of rock deep underground that store and move water. Many cities get their water from aquifers. Cities dig deep wells into an aquifer and then pump the water high into big towers to store it. Oh my! From there, it flows down into pipes that go to homes and other places. If I swam through all those underground pipes, I'd be swimming for thousands of miles. Can we look underground? Under a typical building, you'll see a pipe that brings clean water in and a different pipe that takes dirty water out. The water in the blue pipe is nice and clean, but the water in the brown pipe? That has lots of yucky stuff in it. From the toilet, the dishwasher, the clothes washer, that's wastewater. Where does the dirty water go? The pipe from the house joins a bigger pipe in the street that leads to even bigger pipes that take the dirty water all the way to a wastewater treatment plant. That's where the water gets cleaned. Then, the water's returned to a river and is part of the natural water cycle again. Anura, Anadi, are you ready to take our friends to visit the Metro Wastewater Treatment Plant? Absolutely! There it is! The Metro plant was built in 1938 on the lowest land in the Twin Cities. It's one of the biggest wastewater treatment plants in the United States. Cleaning wastewater takes several steps. We start with preliminary treatment. A bar screen takes large objects out of the wastewater. A conveyor belt moves the waste to a dumpster, which is dumped at a landfill. The dirty water continues to the next process. In primary treatment, the wastewater flows to a large tank called the grit chamber. In the chamber, we slow down the flow. This allows the heavier materials, such as sand and gravel and some food particles, to settle to the bottom of the tank. These materials get scraped into a sump, pumped into a truck, and taken to a landfill. 
Is the water clean now? No, but about half the pollutants have been removed. Sludge settles to the bottom of the tank and is pumped to an incinerator. In the next tank, floatable solids such as grease and oil are skimmed from the top and pumped for disposal in a landfill. Sludge gets pumped to a centrifuge. That's a cylinder that rotates at a high speed. The centrifuge removes water so we can burn the sludge. The dried sludge, called cake, falls into a bin. Don't give me any of that cake for my birthday. Oh, don't worry. The cake is pumped to a huge incinerator. It's four stories high and reaches temperatures of 1,375 degrees Fahrenheit. The sludge burns to a fine ash, which we send to a landfill. At the same time the sludge is being dried out, the water and remaining solids go to secondary treatment. Oxygen is pumped into big water tanks where good bacteria can live. The bacteria eat pollutants in the wastewater, like phosphorus and ammonia. What do the bacteria look like? Hey, Paramecium, come look at this. Uh, what's up, Philodina? Ew, gross. Hey, activated sludge flock. What are they? The tall one is from a genus of herons known as Ardea. Usually they're found in wetlands and they prey on fish, frogs, and other aquatic species. The green one is a short-bodied amphibian from the scientific order Anura. The one that quacks is from the Anatidae family of water birds, sometimes called dabbling ducks. Can we eat them? In time, Borticella. In time. Hey, Tokophyra, check this out. Why are they looking at me? Do I have something in my teeth? Oh, wait, I don't have any teeth. Lunch time. What's happening here? In final settling, any remaining solids sink to the bottom and are pumped to the incinerator. The water flows to the chlorine contact channel. Now we add chlorine to kill any remaining disease-causing organisms and to clarify the water. It looks beautiful. Can I swim in it? Not yet, Anadi. These are the gates that control the flow of the cleaned water being channeled to the Mississippi River. This channel gives the chlorine the time it needs to mix with the water. The chlorine kills any remaining harmful germs but chlorine can also harm the river. So there's one more step. Come on, Anura. In the final step of wastewater treatment, sodium bisulfite is added to the water to eliminate the chlorine. The cleaned water is released to the Mississippi River to be used again and support life on Earth. The water is safe for all of us. Metropolitan Council Environmental Services treats wastewater for more than 100 cities and townships at nine treatment plants. We work 24 hours a day to clean about 250 million gallons of wastewater every day of the year. We meet environmental regulations and win performance awards. Well, that's the end of our tour. Help keep treatment plants and pipes working by not putting things in the toilet that don't belong there. A wipe may be called flushable, but it's not. Don't put wipes, dental floss, paper towels, cat litter, and other materials in the toilet. If it can go in the garbage, it should go in the garbage. Bye, and thanks to all the people who protect public health and the environment. You're our heroes. Come back anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your comments or questions, or request a treatment plant tour. To find out lots more about water, visit our website at metrocouncil.org.